In this video, I'll share the progress I've been making on a new user interface I'm building for the Amazon Bedrock image models. I'm following these design tenets. Make simple things easy and complex things possible. Make the images the star of the show and make it feel like a professional creative tool. Here's what the interface looks like to a new user. Let's start by generating our first image. We can generate multiple images from this same prompt just by submitting it multiple times. We can even create a new prompt while those images are generating and submit that prompt without having to wait for the previous images. Once the image is generated, you can hover over the image to see the prompt that created it, as well as some options for actions to take on that image. Those options include re-roll, which we'll talk about in a moment, download, and delete. You can also copy the original prompt if you'd like to use it as the basis for a new prompt. Clicking on the image reveals a large view of it and shows you more details about how it was created. Clicking on the image again closes it. The prompt field also accepts templatized prompts. Templatized prompts include two or more values between curly braces. When you submit a templatized prompt, the app will generate all the permutations to create an image for each possible combination. Submitting this templatized prompt results in four different prompts. A beagle on a beach, a beagle on a park bench, a Great Dane on a beach, and a Great Dane on a park bench. You may have noticed that when we submit each prompt, we get a variety of image aspect ratios. You can change this behavior and others by expanding the settings panel. Here we can provide a negative prompt, we can change the prompt strength. We can choose between standard and premium quality. And by default, you'll see that the app is set to use random sizes and random seeds when generating images. While the random size mode is enabled, you can choose to prefer lower cost, which will choose image resolutions at a lower price point, or prefer higher resolution, which can result in better quality images. If you disable random sizing, you can choose the aspect ratio you'd like to generate, as well as the resolution you'd like to use. If we turn off random seed, you can provide an explicit random seed or hit the randomize button to generate a random seed. For now, we'll keep random seed enabled. Now let's look at how a user might use all these options to perform a real world task. Let's say I'm doing some visual concepting for a film I'm working on, and I want to explore the environments and costumes I might want for my film. So I'll choose an aspect ratio that looks a little more cinematic. And then I'll use this templatized prompt. Visual concept for a space opera film, a cinematic photo featuring the landscape or people or architecture of a desert or forest planet. You'll see that six different prompts get generated, and they're all using the same aspect ratio, which will make it easy for us to compare the results. After a little while, the results begin to appear, and they look great. And this would be a good time to use that re-roll button we saw earlier. Let's say I want to further explore the architecture options for this forest planet. I can hit the re-roll button a couple times to generate new images that use the same prompt and other parameters as the first image. Another feature of this interface I'd like to draw your attention to is that it displays the costs you've incurred while generating these images during this session. Also, all the images you see here are saved locally by default. So they'll be here when you return to this site in the same browser. But you can clear that local data at any time by clicking on the cog icon and clicking the clear local data button. There are many more features I hope to add soon, including editing features, but I hope you like what you've seen so far and I'll continue to share updates as I make progress.